Today, we are joined by the wonderful Joe McNally. <laughs> For those of you that don't know Joe, introduce yourself to our lovely YouTube fan base. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Joe McNally. Yeah. Happy to be here at Grays of Westminster. What a, an amazing store this is with a legend, a history to it, you know. Uh, and uh, I've been a freelance photographer basically for a very long time. General assignment, magazine shooter, commercial work, you know, kitchen sink of yeah. assignment. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of everything. Very versatile. Try to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I learned that lesson early on. I mean, I came out of newspapers, which does teach you um, a certain measure of versatility for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I just want to add that Joe published several books as well. I've learned Flash from Joe's book, so mm. I'm very grateful. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Well, that's wonderful. Good news. Uh, so Joe has actually had the Z9 for a short period of time and has done some amazing stuff with it. So we are going to, you know, uh, speak about the elephant in the room. <laughs> sure, yeah. Too <laughs> Which... short a time. I'm <laughs> sure everyone is who has touched that camera and then had to give it back is uh, is missing it because yes. it's it's quite a machine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but before we touch on the Z9, tell us what have you been up to lately? I know that it's been an interesting sort of past 12 months for you. Yeah, it has been. I mean, for everyone, obviously, globally, we are still in the throes of the, the COVID thing. Um, but Work has come back. I've started to travel again. I went to the Tokyo Olympics yes. and uh, worked with Zuma Press to cover the games, which was, you know, strange and wonderful at the same time. The athletes always lift us up. They're um, magnificent. And the atmosphere was, um, you know, I, I just have to say I'm, I get caught up in the Olympic spirit even though there were no fans in the stands, mm. which was very, very odd. Uh, but I, I celebrate the athletes, and I was happy to be there uh, covering it. It's uh, I had done Rio and then Tokyo, and maybe, who knows, I'll look forward to Paris. We'll see what happens. Wow. Compared to previous years of Olympics, what was the, what was the atmosphere like at the Tokyo Olympics this year? Well, very controlled, yeah. very controlled. Took four and a half hours to get through the airport. Wow. You know, there was a lot of controversy about the games, if they should even have been held. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, um, tip of the hat to the Japanese people, the Japanese culture, everybody pulled together. The volunteers were wonderful. And Japan pulled it off. They really did, you know, uh, even though, albeit controlled circumstances. It was disappointing, of course, to be in a magnificent city like Tokyo and see none of it. You yes. know, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even cross the road, wow. you know, from my hotel. I could go to the Olympic bus, mm. to the venue, to the bus, to my hotel. I was only allowed to leave my hotel for 15 minutes at a clip. Right. I could go down the block to the family mart, which is where I bought all my food and ate sandwiches, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for over three weeks oh my goodness. from the family mart, which actually I was totally happy because family mart sandwiches are really, really good. Okay. <laughs> as long as you like eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Are you looking forward uh, for the crowds to be back to the stadiums for the next Olympics? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, uh, 2024 Paris, you know, we'll see. Hopefully I'll be there. And I think it could be a wonderful celebration of the kind of return of the exuberance of the Olympic spirit and everybody being able to participate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you were telling us a little bit about what kit you've been using over the last year. That obviously segues quite nicely into the Z9. But what were you using before that for the Olympics and beforehand? Sure. For the Olympics, um, again, courtesy of Nikon Professional Services, wonderful folks, support photographers, I was using D6s. Right. And then, you know, for my work or surrounding the Olympics features and things like that, I've been shooting the uh, Z6, uh, Z6 II and Z7 II. Nice. So, uh, which are, are wonderful cameras. But, Okay, <laughs> you take a D6 in your hand and, you know, that camera's a beast. Yeah, absolutely. And probably just the perfect thing for something like the Olympics. I mean, you wouldn't go to that with a Z6 II necessarily. No, no. It, the, the, the action and the crucial nature of it, the fact that these are potentially historic performances that mm -hmm. are occurring, you want to bring a flagship camera. Yeah. You know, 14 frames a second, bang on autofocus, uh, robust quality to the build. You know, I always find if I'm shooting a 600 f4 or an 800 56, you want that kind of grip, you know, that gives you leverage on lenses because mm -hmm. tripods are not allowed at the Olympics. Ah, right. Everything's monopod. 
Yeah. You know, so you can't actually put a camera down or you can't place a tripod and let a camera rest. You are constantly working with the gravity of, of that long piece of glass. Yeah. So a, a big camera, if you will, uh, that's got a, a really sizable grip on it and has some heft to it is an advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, it's a question that we get asked quite a lot is what lens do you use in a sporting event like that? What were your kind of main lenses for that? Sure. Uh, I was a, a one person orchestra you know <laughs> so i tried to maximize like at athletics track and field i would oftentimes bring an 800 which is a little bit of overkill right and then the um the 180 to 400 with the built-in extender nice so i'd have the 800 on a monopod and i could reach because at at for instance, athletics, there's events going on simultaneously. Mm. So the the high jump or the pole vault is happening while certain sprints or hurdles are running. So I would use the 800 to reach to those. And then near term, something happening where a sprint is coming at me, I would handhold the 180 to 400. Right. Incredible. Tell us about the speed of delivering images to the agencies, because obviously it's all happening in real time and the images are out pretty much straight away. Not many people know about the process involved in doing that. Sure. Uh, the Yeah, speed is of the essence. You want to get uh, your images out. For instance, I was there for both of the nights of the Simone Biles uh, kind of drama that mm -hmm. occurred. She dropped out and then she came back for the beam. So I was there for both of those nights and those pictures had to be delivered pretty immediately. So you you are dragging and dropping and selecting immediately. Some photographers are transmitting right from their positions. I didn't do that. I would go back into the press center, download, pick, and then ship. Uh, this is where teamwork comes in. I have a wonderful, you know, staff you know <laughs> at the studio we're a small studio but have um uh, lynn del mastro is our studio manager and then annie cahill runs our you know uh, social media marketing etc and also happens to be my wife which is <laughs> wonderful so i would do my rough captions and ship the pictures quickly to Annie. She would then organize them a bit better in terms of information and FTP them immediately to the Zuma site. Nice. So it was teamwork all the way. And then Annie was guiding our social media. And uh, much as I didn't want to be writing blogs at two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I did. Mm -hmm. you know? I read, read those. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's an exhausting thing. You're working 18 to 20 hours a day for three straight weeks. Incredible. Wow. You know? One of the big things that a lot of people talk about is, oh, the D6 doesn't have the ability to immediately transfer pictures over. The Z9 does now, thank goodness. But is that something that you actually ever use? No, I actually don't. I mean, at Rio, I was shooting D5, and because I was shooting for Sports Illustrated in mm. Rio, uh, I was able to, at the major venues, I was able to jack into an ethernet cable. Mm. Uh. So as soon as I was shooting, my editors were seeing the pictures two miles away at the Sports Illustrated Bureau. Right. Zuma is not a large agency. It's a more of a boutique operation. It's not Getty or AFP. Mm. So we did not have the dedicated wires uh, for our agency at the various venues. So I would just, you know, gather images and then edit immediately afterwards. Interesting. Mm. And in terms of reliability, do you notice that a lot of people use LAN cables instead of uh, wireless transmitters on the big events like this? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's the only way to go, but in a massive venue where you have all sorts of wireless networks operating, it's the by far the most secure for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and fastest, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, you know, wireless transmission is wonderful, um, but still limited. You know, mm -hmm. you can't, you're not going to be wanting to transfer big files. You'll right. get, you'll get slowed down pretty, pretty, you know, you'll get slowed down pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. That's a, you know, <laughs> no, <I know>. oxymoron, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah. So I, I was, uh, as I say, just a one person operation, uh, operating in conjunction with Zuma, and so I'd, I'd edit and ship as fast as I could. Wow, yeah, interesting. I do find that kind of fast, that whole workflow very interesting because yeah. everything is so fast, you know, and the turnaround is so quick. You want everything to be pretty much perfect in camera, I guess. You can't really do much tweaking. Yes, uh, what little tweaking I did, I, I used Capture One, which is for me a very fast, intuitive program, mm -hmm. but I didn't do much to the files because, you know, the stadiums and the venues are lit for television. Right. 
And so broadly speaking, I won't say it's great light, but it's certainly adequate, right. you know, for your purposes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's could be it could be its own interview, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The I whole mean, thing about the Olympics and the process that. involved in that. But yeah. we're gonna move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, so then after that you had the Z9 recently, just yeah. pre launch for, for a few days. Yes. Yeah. Um as I say, far too small amount of time. I, I think, you know, it's uh it's a wonderful camera. I look forward to it. I mean there were I I would say dozens for sure, maybe even into the hundreds of questions while I was at the games on social media, like, hey, Joe, how's the Z9? <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. and I don't know, because <laughs> uh, I haven't touched it yet. Yeah. So uh, yes, I had this idea I conjured in response to what uh, Nikon USA asked me to pursue. They said, don't do sports. Okay. We've got sports covered. There are a couple of magnificent sport photo sports photographers we have already working on stuff so come up with something you know out of your imagination so um i shot this flaming race car in the desert uh i've seen far too many post-apocalyptic movies yeah, you know, yeah. and <laughs> that's really the origin of all of this that was definitely the feel i got from those yeah. images actually Mad Max vibe, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure so ed fenn is the driver and uh, designer of that car and i had worked with ed about 10 years ago and he's just this big gregarious bear of a guy you know wow. and um you know uh, he said yeah come on out i said can we uh can we put flashes in your cockpit again yeah sure <laughs> um can we drop you know he's got a propane arrangement that he can flow propane into his exhaust um you know tubes that then would hit a pilot light and produce flames oh yeah that's okay wow. and i said can i take your parachutes out of the out of the back of the vehicle and replace them with smoke canisters. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, he's like the greatest photo subject you ever want, yeah. you know, because he just likes to drive a car fast. Yeah. The thing buzzed past me at 150 miles an hour and he was just getting out of first gear. Wow. You know, so the, the car can go in excess of 250 into the 300 range. Amazing. So he just is an amazing and wonderful guy, just always up for an adventure. So he's a perfect photo subject. And then I asked uh, another um, subject to come out and work with us. He's a Vegas performer right. who's been in a lot of uh, shows, you know, like Lion King and whatnot in Vegas. Mm. Tremendous dancer, athlete, performer, all those roles. And I asked him to come out and pose for us. So the second day uh, after we had done with the car, which was a very complicated shot, we were able to work in a more simple fashion with a up to this tremendous athlete and, and dancer. Yeah. I love the, I mean, I thought that he must be some kind of athlete with just the way that he was jumping and the mm -hmm. heights that he was jumping from standing, you know, I was thinking, oh my goodness. That's sure. A, Will is, <laughs> Will is wonderful to work with. And as you know, he's, I, he's 42 years old, you really? know, and, uh, yeah. you know, he's at the craft service table and he's just like chowing down and the, we're just <laughs> looking at him and he looks like, you know, I eat anything I want. Yeah. I'm like, Somehow that's just not fair. No, you know? his metabolism <laughs> must be so good. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously he works very hard yeah. at it and he's uh, magnificently fit. And he's, you know, he's starting to teach fitness and he still performs in shows. Vegas is coming back, you know, all mm -hmm. of that. So it was wonderful to work for him. First, first time we worked together uh, ever and I definitely will seek to work with him again. Nice, lovely. And then in that setup, you had, do you have one light, just a key light? I mean, or it varied a little bit because it was a bit it, more flash work. Yes, yeah. it varied. Um, I had him bracketed with flash. These are our big flashes, high powered 2400 watt second mm -hmm. units. Mm -hmm. And then in some instances, I just had one and other instances, um, none, just available light. Right. But one thing I was curious about, which I think a lot of people are curious about with the Z9, is it has no mechanical shutter, so what happens to flash sync? Mm. And I synced high speed without a problem. Uh, I haven't explored it up to the limits of high speed sync, uh, which is 8,000 as mm -hmm. stated, but I think, let's see, in one instance we were at 1250, one 1250th of a second uh, with big power packs, mm -hmm. worked extremely well. Right, so you can put that myth to bed. <laughs> it was very, yeah, Z9 very can shoot flash. It can, <laughs> yeah. It was yes. a question I had because of the lack of mechanical shatter, and I thought, well, obviously it does work, but it, you automatically think that it needs a mechanical shutter to do it. 
apparently not. No, it does not. <laughs> it's this thing is a wonder of engineering. I mean, I, I've told photographers, I said, look, every time you click the shutter on this thing, you should buy the engineers a beer. You, know, <laughs> you just really should. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's remarkable. And also, too, uh, folks probably know this, but without the mechanical shutter, you can be completely silent. Mm. Or you can, uh, and there's l levels of the volume, but you can introduce a shutter noise. Yes, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a simulation. Yeah, it's a simulated yeah. noise. It's, yeah. There is no shutter, so there's no shutter noise. Mm -hmm. But they realized, you know, that photographers are going to want to hear something yeah. you know mm -hmm. going on in in many instances so yes that's a, a you know programmed into the camera mm -hmm. yeah it, it's almost like with, with electric cars where you don't have the sound of the engine anymore yes yeah. exactly yeah. i think we're entering a whole new era now for <laughs> sure but coming back to flash a little bit so you wouldn't use that nine any different as your g6 or let's say z7 cameras in terms of using flash with it absolutely not no no, uh, works well. I I have not used it with uh, Nikon speed lights yet, mm -hmm. which is a new will be a frontier that I'll I'll cross. But you know they're systematic with the camera, so I don't anticipate any issues with that at all. So yeah, fantastic. So Joe, what was the most groundbreaking feature of Z9 that you found the most useful? Numerous. I mean, everybody's talking about the AF and the speed, and those certainly were a revelation to me. But one of the coolest things, and this is maybe just me personally, is there is no break in the action. You have continuous view mm -hmm. of your subject. Right. No matter how fast that camera is firing, you never lose sight of your subject. And when that started to happen, I actually, we had Nikon personnel with us, you know, in case, you know, troubleshooting and this and that. And uh, I just looked at him, I said, you know, I've never had that experience before. Because I've never shot a camera where I've had continuous view. There's always been, you know, that interruption mm -hmm. where the shutter, even for a slight bit of time, will black you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And true. Um, so that was actually very, very cool. It was continuous live view of my subject. Interesting. And is there a particular feature from your experience that you think people are maybe not talking about enough? I mean, that's certainly one that does get mentioned, mm -hmm. even though... I think sports and wildlife photographers are the only ones that are going to notice. I don't know. If you're a portrait photographer, you might not necessarily worry too much about the occasional blackout. Or does it bother you as a, as a portrait it, photographer? It does, yeah. actually. I, I was talking with uh, Matthew Jordan Smith, mm. who's mm -hmm. a wonderful fashion studio beauty photographer. And we both agreed that this advantage that gets created by seeing your subject continuously mm. is a serious advantage. Because when... You know, back in the day, shutters would be like cut chunk, you know, um, and you know, be like, where's my subject? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that continuous observation, because um, expressions are fleeting, mm. you know, and you know, a look, uh, an eyebrow, uh, a continuous connection to your subject, I think, is not only important for the pictorial aspects of the assignment, but it's important for the emotional connection to your subject. Yeah. So uh, I find it. Or, and we'll continue to find it very handy, not just for sports or, um, you know, action. I'm not a wildlife photographer, but in the studio, I think it's going to be significant. Yeah, you wow. Know? The, the sexy thing about the camera, of course, is the AF, yes. which is unbelievable. Uh, it's so tuned in. I've never seen anything like this before where I, I've described the AF as sticky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it grabs you mm -hmm. and it stays with you, <laughs> yeah. you know. But what some folks might not be discussing all that much because it's not in the speed realm it's etc is um durability mm. you know the build you know i have always liked a big camera and i was kind of nervous when i shifted to z6 and z7 how am i going to grapple with this but i i was pretty immediately seduced by the um technology advantages of mirrorless yeah and so i adapted you know it was fine but still, you know, the, the, especially there's a deepness, uh, deep, a depth, depth, yeah. depth <laughs> you know, uh, uh, to the way the, uh, the body is molded, the ergonomics of it, mm. so that you can really grip it, especially if you go vertical, especially with long glass. So I find the, the, the build to be uh, an important feature, like harking back to the Rio Olympics. 
I was one of the very few photographers um, in the pool to go to the field for the closing ceremonies. Mm -hmm. And we all had a dress in black, you know, caps and everything. So we stayed off of the radar of the televisions. Mm -hmm. Um, But the unfortunate part of the closing ceremonies was it was a three hour nonstop downpour. Mm. And I was shooting D5s. And, you know, you dress for the weather and stuff like that as best as you can. But after three hours in a driving yeah. rainstorm, yeah. you're just, it's like you might as well jump into a tub, yeah. you know. And the cameras kept working. Wow. Flawlessly. Mm. They just kept banging out pictures. And that's what I've always appreciated about the flagship build mm. of a camera, you know. And the Nikon system has always been, the, you know, among the most robust and engineered cameras around. And so I find that now translating to the mirrorless tech that we have. And so this marriage to me is right where I am loving to be, Mm -hmm. you know? And also I think photographers will really respond to having this extremely high-end camera that's built to, uh, you know, just beat the, (laughs) <laughs> living daylight <laughs> beat the oh the heck out of this yes. camera yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. and also just perform at such a high level with all of the advantages of mirrorless it's it's a wonderful evolution mm. yeah. well that infamous uh, motocross photo shoot that you did with that nine <laughs> Uh, kind of that's a lot of infamous. Yeah, exactly. Infamous. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of years I was, saw, saw that and they, they put, you know, the same comments. I was like, what Nikon is going to do with that camera? <laughs> and then someone said, well, they just had it the next day with another photographer. So it was absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, they did clean it up. It was, it was uh, their camera, obviously, uh, my lens, but Nikon Repair took it in and said, We'll look after it, you know. <laughs> I mean, they tried not to get too yeah. angry about it. Um, <laughs> give it the buff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Let's give it a little bit of spin polish. Came <laughs> back uh, pretty much brand new. Amazing. You know, incredible. So. <laughs> That's very impressive, actually, considering yeah. the sheer amount of my you couldn't even tell what camera and lens it was by the time you'd finished. Yeah, you know, I positioned myself um fortunately for a photograph, because the pictures came out relatively well. But unfortunately for the direct line of sight spray from, (laughs) because it had rained the night before on the course, Mm -hmm. heavy rain. So the course was just a swamp. And, uh, you know, so that's what you do. You jump into the swamp. Yes. (laughs) Conditions were perfect. (laughs) (laughs) It was really dramatic shots. Yeah. Um, Did you get to try the 100-400 at all? I did. Yes. I shot uh, some of the fashion stuff and Mm. some of the athlete moving uh, you know, running across the desert with the 100, 400 and, uh, perfect. I mean, I was able to camp out literally on the desert floor, uh, on a tripod and, uh, Will was at a distance bracketed by big flash. So mm-hmm. I'm triggering big flash at high speed sync and just moving my frame back and forth. The other thing too, that, you know, um, I did not grow up with this kind of technology. So I find it wonderful that with a flick of a button, I can change up my um, my image area because mm. mm. I've always loved uh, square format, mm-hmm. you know, for portraiture and flick of a button, I'm in square format, flick of a button, I'm in 16 by nine. Mm. So I find that to be yet again, another iteration of, um, you know, versatility mm-hmm. of the, you know, if you're versatile as a photographer, you want a versatile piece of equipment. Yeah. yeah. And the Z9 really delivers on that. Nice. What's your normal setup then? Instead of a 100 to 400, you normally have the 70 to 200 or F mount glass. Sure, um, I, I, you know, pretty much go out with the uh, with the holy trinity of millimeters. You know, 14, mm. 24, 24, 70, 70 to 200. Yeah. If I'm going big glass, you know, I've historically, you know, I have one of the older 200 to 400s. You know, and and actually, I bought it here at Gray's. I I, I have a thousand millimeter mirror F11. Ooh. I remember that when I sold it to you. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but you know, I have a whole range of, of glass. Probably my favorite telephoto that uh, I'll probably never give up is my 200 f2. Oh yes. You know, but it's wonderful that um, Z mount long glass is coming. Mm-hmm. You know, the 100 to 400, 400 to 8 has been announced, mm-hmm. you know, built-in extender. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, looking forward to those. It's kind of, we've had a bit of a gap, I think, in the range yeah. for 
a while. And it's nice that they're finally sort of filling that. Is there anything you'd like us to ask you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to know. Well, <laughs> how revealing do you want this interview to be? <laughs> we want all the dirt. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Lord. You know, the stories you could tell yeah. uh, from being a photographer as long as I have. I can um, tell you one thing that is, is fun and long time coming. Uh, I have a new book coming out. It's called The Real Deal, Field Notes from the Life of a Working Photographer. Wow. And the uh, the ebook version is available right now on Amazon. Sadly, the physical book is, uh, along with several thousand of you know, <laughs> the, the edition, the first edition is bobbing around in the Pacific somewhere mm. uh. and uh, kind of a, a bit of a victim, as so many things are, of the global mm -hmm. supply chain mm. issues. And we were hoping for Christmas but we will not make it. it. The physical book will get into the stores in later January. But it's it's really good feeling to have it done because mm -hmm. I thought about it for a long time. I delayed doing it. Sitting down and writing for me is really sometimes like going to the dentist. You really? know, it just it's very very hard to do. But uh, but you I'm, wouldn't I'm think with... it. You wouldn't think it from the way that you write because you write so kind of it's so fresh. Yeah. And so entertaining, as well as being informative, that I wouldn't think that it was a challenge for you at all. Yeah, sometimes you just sit down and things just flow. Mm. Uh, other times, it, it's hard to for me to sit and concentrate. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I think that has played into a career in photography is that it's always different. Mm. And I'm out in the field. I'm reacting to the world. I'm, you know, in a location that's throwing me surprises, and I'm able to react to that. But put me down at a computer and tell me I have to sit there for two or three hours. That's, that's hard. It's painful. But, yeah. You'd you know, rather be in the field taking some photographs. I'm a field person. <laughs> yeah. I really am. I'm no good in an office. <laughs> but that's great. So the so the ebook is already out and available. The the physical is it paperback or a it's a hardcover hard oh, no. i'm looking forward yeah, to nice. that 350 yeah. pages and lots of pictures predictably yeah. and it's um it's anecdotal right you know there's there's learning involved and some teaching but it's anecdotally presented it's not like okay f-stop 11 mm -hmm. your power pack is this no there's plenty of information like that out there on the internet uh, and this, I've described it uh, as uh, it's not a super highway to a piece of knowledge. It's more of a country road. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a meander through the life of a photographer. Love it. Excellent. Well, I'll be definitely picking up a copy yeah, of that. Definitely. <laughs> maybe I'll start with e version now, but I definitely will look for that forward to a hard copy. And maybe next time you're here, I'll ask you to sign it for me. Yeah. Absolutely. That would be nice. Absolutely. All right. Then I do have a final question in closing. What's what's next for you? What's your next big adventure or small adventure? Good question. A uh, couple of things coming up. I I can't talk about one assignment that I may have in January. Mm -hmm. That's kind of you know pending. Sure. Uh, but I do have an adventure uh, with Tamara Lackey and Amy Vitali, two wonderful photographers and very close friends. We're taking a whole group to the Amazon in February. <gasps> Wow. I've never been to the Amazon before, never been to Ecuador before. Mm. So we go to Quito in Ecuador, and then we go into the Amazon basin with a group. And they've been a wonderful group because we've had to delay this workshop for about two years, mm -hmm. and the folks have just stuck with us relentlessly. So uh, finally, finally, we're going to turn the corner and get this done. So that's going to be a, a pretty big adventure actually coming up that I'm looking forward to. Fantastic. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Joe. It's been an absolute delight to have you here. Well, thanks to both of you. This is a wonderful thing that you're doing, and it's great to for the photo community, you know, to keep sharing information. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, thank you.